Down here, all of those things you just mentioned are true. However, when they did the amputation, anesthesia or anesthesia? Yes. 95 plus percent of the time, they're under general, general anesthesia. The only time we didn't give general anesthesia is if you had a facial wound or an impaired airway because the anesthesia of the day was highly corrosive. It would have been impossible to administer without further, further damaged tissue. Anesthesia has been around by the time of the Civil War for 15 years. Why wouldn't they use it? People say, well, because it's too hard to make. It's made of alcohol. <laughs> alcohol is not hard to make. I have friends who make it in their basement. <laughs> well, beer <laughs> anyway, because the other side would be illegal, and I wouldn't know anything to do that. <laughs> alcohol is easy to make. All you need is either sulfuric acid, which is also very easy to make. It's just sulfur gas and water. Um, or chlorine powder, which is easy to get. It wasn't hard to make. Doctors couldn't make it up. Actually, kids can make it up with an old chemistry set in about 10 minutes. It's not hard to do. So why is it that all of our movies show no anesthesia? Well, because it makes a good movie. If the guy's laying there on the table silently, what fun is that? <laughs> it's more dramatic for Scarlett O'Hara to come walking in the doctor and say, ah, oh, we're out of chloroform. Oh, well. <laughs> We know that doctors did not do amputations when anesthesia was not uh, available because they wrote it down. At the Battle of Antietam, one of the famous quotes of a doctor is, our greatest shortage was that of chloroform and ether. And in its absence, surgery was delayed or made impossible by death. They didn't cut them off without anesthesia. So what else did we get wrong in the Civil War? Well, it's interesting. Not one of you told me, oh, when I think of Civil War medicine, I think of plastic and reconstructive surgery. But they did it. They invented it. And you, none of you said, well, when I think of Civil War medicine, I think of a modern ambulance system. They invented that, too. You also did the same neurology, modern nursing, specialty hospitals, maxifacial surgery specialists, orthodontics. These are all things that came out of the American Civil War. But that's not what, the way we think of them. So, in there we try and dispel the myths that most doctors were only qualified to be the town butcher. Because, in fact, I've heard major historians say, if you could be the town butcher, you could be the town doctor. And that is absolutely true, so long as the town butcher could read and write fluently in Latin, compound all of the known medications, be able to pass examinations in anatomy, physiology, pharmacology, chemistry, mathematics, uh, and creative writing. He would have also had to have had a good understanding of surgical procedure. He would have had to have had a good understanding of all the internal workings of the body beyond just normal physiology classes, the inner relationship with the various organs. Why would he be a butcher? Because that required medical school. And as you saw in there, as you passed through, you may not have noticed that we have a list of all the medical schools that were around the time of the Civil War. Now, one other thing. Were women allowed to be doctors in the 19th century? Before the Civil War? Many people would say no. Actually, there were several colleges that admitted no men. <laughs> so you couldn't get in if you were a man, only if you were a woman. The other question we always get is, were there any black doctors in the Civil War? Yes. They just weren't trained in Southern medical schools. <laughs> um, during the course of the Civil War, the United States Army is absolutely certain that there were at least nine African Americans, excuse me, at least seven African American surgeons. We found nine of the seven. <laughs> <laughs> and we published the first book on them. The other thing you may not know about the museum, we have our own press. And we just published our fourth major book. All of these books have won major national awards. And again, people in Frederick are not typically aware we even have a National Museum of Civil War Medicine Press, but I guarantee they know us in London, um, which is where a lot of our books wind up going. So there were female doctors, there were black doctors, they were better trained than you think, and they knew more than you think they